Dr. Margaret uh, uh, with your permission, um, the question is about the, the European uh, Council meeting, Minister, but I just have two questions for you, and I'm quite prepared to concede, actually, to cede the rest of my time to you if you want to develop the theme. One is, uh, just you mentioned about the Israeli ambassador that you uh, called him in today and, and you outlined what you said to him. You might give us some flavour of what uh, the ambassador's response was. Um, and then the second question again, and I would like you to develop this theme. Uh, I understand you had uh, some um, uh, online uh, dialogue with Senator John Kerry about climate action, and I would be grateful if you could uh, inform the House maybe of the, the fruits of that discussion. Margaret uh, Arthur. Hot them up. Thanks. Lara. Yeah, look, I, I mean, I, I think the Israeli ambassador will be able to speak for himself. I think he's in the Foreign Affairs Committee uh, tomorrow, uh, potentially, uh, giving, giving an Israeli perspective. And, uh, you know, he, he will do what you would expect him to do, which is to give an Israeli perspective on, on security, uh, on why the Israeli government felt that they had to respond the way they, they have done. Uh, 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 in terms of uh, protecting their own populations against rocket fire coming from Gaza uh, and so on. Um, uh, and that is part of the story that, that we can't ignore, of course. Uh, but I think there is, a, there is a broader story as well in terms of, of what has driven the tension that has resulted in this cycle of violence uh, and, uh, and how we respond to that, as well as trying to actually create a ceasefire as well. I mean, there are um, you know, influential and connected countries at the moment trying to work on a ceasefire. Um, and people who are involved in the Middle East peace process will know who they are, um, you know, Egypt and Qatar and others, um, unsuccessfully so far. Uh, and I fear that we're going to see an escalation before we see an end to this cycle of violence. Uh, and unfortunately, many more, um, I hope, anyway, not, I hope I'm wrong, uh, but I suspect we, we may well see many more uh, innocent civilians and indeed children uh, dying as a result uh, of this latest cycle of violence, which is the worst we've seen in a number of years. Um, in terms of the conversation with John Kerry, I'm glad to say that was a much more positive um, uh, discussion. Uh, the exchange with um, Special uh, Presidential Envoy Kerry focused on the preparations for COP26 and measures that need to be taken to ensure success, including bringing uh, along least developed countries and small island developing states. Um, can I say that you know, my contribution on behalf of Ireland to that was to focus on the practical cooperation uh, needed between the EU and the US in a number of areas. One, around climate finance. Uh, we've got to spend more money and commit more financial resources on climate finance, particularly around adaptation for developing countries, for small island developing states, uh, and for countries that desperately need to invest in infrastructure to adapt to the new realities that they're facing uh, on the basis of climate change that's already happening, as well as planning for, for further change in the future, whether that's desertification, whether it's more violent storms in places like the Caribbean, um, uh, whether it's uh, flood risk uh, on small island states uh, in the South Pacific. Um, uh, so um, I think he, he agreed on a lot of that. The other area where I, I'd like us to do more work uh, is on oceans. Uh, you cannot have a credible global climate action uh, uh, agenda without a, a very serious discussion around oceans uh, from, a, from a, a mitigation and an adaptation perspective. Um, uh, and so I would say the areas where we focused most in terms of transatlantic cooperation and got a very good response from him, by the way, was uh, funding for, for climate uh, adaptation and resilience, because there's a huge amount of focus on mitigation, not enough focus potentially on adaptation and resilience, and of course oceans, which is something I'm very interested in and I think Ireland can become a global leader on uh, through the combination of good policy decisions and research. Don't forget in the Programme for Government, we're one of the few countries in the world that actually commits Ireland to designating 30% of our ocean uh, territory uh, to, to become uh, marine protection areas uh, at different levels of, of, um, of protection. Uh, and I think uh, we need to develop that policy now uh, in the context of uh, COP26. Thank you very much, Minister. The conversation reflected a complete change in attitude, change Some of tone, thing. change of temperature uh, from the United States in relation to, for yeah. example, the Paris Accord yeah. and just thank climate action in general. Thank you, Deputy. Yeah. Thank you.
Tari, no, that's just that's the end of that because the deputy conceded his time, so we've reached, I'm afraid. Yeah. There's three minutes. I have, there's four minutes for the interaction. I'm only, uh, so I've just yeah. come in now and I... I'm I know, just, but yeah. I, was, I was following the clock. Um, Don't I come in twice, uh, Chair? No? Well, I had conceded all my time to you, Minister, but they only gave you three minutes. You should have four. <laughs> Let me just quickly, quickly answer that question okay. with the indulgence, uh, 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 yeah, perhaps, yeah. of the Chair. One, one minute. Look, I mean, it's like chalk and cheese. You know, it's, uh, you know we've gone uh, uh, essentially from an administration in Washington that really denied that, that there was a climate emergency at all to, to one that now wants to be a global leader. Uh, in terms of the, the ambition around the response that's needed to, uh, to deliver the targets of 2030 and 2050, which are dramatic. And the truth is that if the US and the EU combined aren't effectively a force for change here, this cannot and will not happen. Uh, and that is why this isn't the first time that John Kerry has actually um, reached out to our Foreign Affairs Council. It's the second time we've had nearly a two-hour discussion with him uh, in terms of the level, ambition that, uh, that the level of ambition that both the US and the EU now working together uh, are trying to, to deliver uh, in terms of uh, global action.